Today we're doing part three of Blebli Sayah. Um, it is a bit scary for little children, so I advise parents to be with them while they're listening to the rest of the story. And I think this one already fell asleep. Hello, children. I missed you. Come inside. Come and sit here. And please, can you take this one to her mommy? Thank you. Be careful, she's asleep. All right. Children, let's sit on the hasira here. And if you got scared, let me know. I can stop or I can send you back to your mom and dad. All right. We are continuing with the story of Blebli Sayah. And where we stopped last time, we stopped when Dana um, asked her brother to go to the beast's land to get her Blebli Sayah. And her older brother said, I can do it. He was a very brave young man. So he got on the horse and he started a long, long journey to the beast land. It was a very long journey. When he got there, he wasn't scared. He was really brave, uh, but he was very cautious. So when he saw a first beast sitting under the tree with lots and lots of bones, they could be human bones. And these bones were piling up. Two beasts. Can you see them? They're trying to sort out all the bones. The brave young man came forward and he said, Assalamu alaikum, ya ghul, which means, hello, beast. And the beast answered him straight away, saying, Hmm, because you started your speech by saying, Salamu Alaikum, I am going to be very merciful. Ask me anything, and your wish is my command. So the young man said to him, I am here to get Blebli Sayah. Can you tell me where to find him and how? The beast said, hmm, you asked the hard one. I think I cannot help you. But if you went there under that big tree near the river, you will find my older brother. He is one day older than me and one year smarter than me. So the young man started walking towards the river until he found another beast sitting under the tree and he did the same thing he said assalamu alaikum ya ghul he started by saying assalamu alaikum which is a very polite and appropriate greeting and the ghul said to him hmm I am glad you started by saying Salaamu Alaikum. And because you started with Salaamu Alaikum, I am not going to eat you. If you didn't, people who live in the mountain will hear the crash of your bones. What do you want? Your wish is my command. So the young man said to him, I am here to get Plebli Sayah. Can you please help me to find him? And the ghoul said, Hmm, you asked the hard one. But if you went there on the top of the mountain, you will find my older brother. He is one day older than me, but one year wiser than me. He might know the answer. So the young man, started going up the mountain until he got to another beast and he did exactly the same he's very smart he said salamu alaikum 
And the same thing happened. The beast told him, because you started with Salaamu Alaikum, you are safe. If you didn't, people who live in the mountains will hear me crushing your bones. What do you want? Your wish is my command. And the young man said, I want Blayblis Sayyah. Can you please direct me to him and tell me how to get him? And the ghul said, and of course by now you know that the ghul means a beast. He said, Blayblis Sayyah is really hard to get. He lives on the top of this mountain, on a rock. And he lives in a cage, a magic cage. He comes with sunset. And he knows that people are always after him. So before he gets inside his cage, he makes sure that there is no human being waiting outside the cage to trap him and take him. So he plays a play. He would say, I am a poor bird. I am so lonely. Please talk to me. Please answer me. Whoever you are, I know you're here. Just say, who's going to help me? I'm a poor bird. Who's going to feed me and look after me? I am dying. Can you please be my angel? And I will make you the happiest person in the world. And he will talk and talk and talk using all the emotional language in the world until he hypnotize you. And you found yourself saying, I'm here, it's me, I'm going to help you, Blayblis Sayah. Once you say that, he knows where you are. He will grab a bit of the sand, the magic sand, throw it on you and turn you into a stone. You will see a big pile of stone next to his cage. These are the people who came before you and they tried to get Blayblis Sayah. Don't be a stone. Please, close your ears. Don't listen to whatever he says until he get tired of talking to you and begging you. And once he's tired, he's going to go inside his cage. That's when you move. You close the cage and you get him. And then you can light up a fire and threat him. Say, if you don't tell me how to make all these people who turned into stone to turn back into human beings, I will burn you. Blebe Sayah is scared of fire. And he will tell you what to do. And once you save all the people before you who turned into stones, you can take him home. Then the young man said, okay, it sounds really hard, but it's doable. But how? He, Blebe Sayah will not see me when he is talking to me and begging me. Is it because the darkness? I will be covered by the dark? And the beast said, no, it's not the darkness. It is taqiyyat lichfa. Taqiyyat lichfa is a hat that you wear on the top of your head and you become invisible. And to get that, only my sister, the beast, can give it to you. You have to go to her house. Her house is over there. If you find her grounding, salt, and angry, and her eyes are red, don't come near her because she'll eat you. But if you found her grounding sugar and she's singing and happy, that's when you approach her and ask her to help you. She will give you the hat, the magic hat that makes you invisible. You put the hat on the top of your head and then you go to catch Blayblis Sayah. The young man did exactly what the beast told him. When he got to the house, he looked from the window and she was grounding salt and her eyes were red and she was angry. He kept quiet until she cleaned up and then she got the mole and she put the salt in it and she started to singing. She started singing happily while she is grounding the sugar. 
So he came inside and said the same thing. Salaamu Alaikum. And she said, hmm, you started with Salaamu Alaikum. You are safe. If you didn't, you will hear, the, the people who live in the mountain will hear me crushing your bones. What do you want? He said, I want the Giyat Lichfa, which means a magic hat that makes me invisible because I'm going to get Blebli Sayah. So she gave it to him. He took it, put it on his head, and he started going up the mountain. When he got there, he saw the cage, a big cage, golden cage. It was empty and the door still open. So he laid down and he blocked his ear and he waited for Blebli Sayyah to come home. When the sun set, Blebli Sayyah came and he started talking to him. I am a poor bird. People think I am bad. Everybody's trying to get me. Everybody's trying to hunt me. Please be nice to me. Please tell, tell me you are here. I will make you happy. I will not hurt you. I'm just a poor bird. Please, I am so lonely. All I need is somebody to talk to me. Just talk to me. Just tell me. Are you here? I can, I can feel you. I know you are here. Just talk to me. He couldn't hold himself, trying to block his ears. But the voice... The voice that comes from that bird, it's like magic. It's like hypnosis. So he found himself saying, It's me, I'm here and I'm going to help you. And Blebli Sayah straight away grabbed the sand and shoo, And he turned him into a stone. Yeah, I know. Okay. He never came back home. Dana at home worrying and waiting for her brother day after day after day he never came back the younger brother said don't worry sister i will go to the beast land and look for my brother and inshallah i'll come back with my brother alive and blebli sayah on the other hand do you think he can that's what we're going to find out in the next episode of Blebli Sayyah. But for now, I wish you the happiest dreams. Dreams with no beasts. <laughs> Good night, my dear ones.